is happening, people. It is Brian Alzer with NeverSafe.com, and welcome to the Exercise Specific Conditioning Sessions Part 3, where we are going to be going over the overhead press. Now, out of this entire series, this video is probably going to be the most important because if you spend any time on the frustrating journey of trying to build bigger or stronger shoulders, you will know that they, in particular, out of all the body parts, need a little bit more reps, a little bit more volume, a little bit more time under tension. They are tough to get results out of. So all of the workouts I'm gonna be giving you guys today are going to encompass all of that. So not only can you expect the awesome cardio benefits of dropping body fat, because believe me, your lungs are gonna get worked, but you're also gonna be working some of the weak points of the main muscle group. You might even gain a little bit of mass, maybe even a little bit of strength through all this. One thing is for sure, you're gonna have a chance to do a lot more reps and grease that groove. So all good things in general. Now, if you're brand new in the series, just stand by one second. I'm gonna explain all this in just one moment. If you guys are a return viewer and you guys saw the bench conditioning sessions and the squat conditioning sessions, just go down below or in the description box because I always add the timestamps to wherever you want to be in the video as well as any relevant links that I might mention. So if you guys are looking for something specific, the last thing I wanna do is hold you for hostage the entire time. And if you're still here, that means you need to know what this is all about. And like I explained at the beginning, Absolutely nothing is worse than when you go in for a strength day. Let's say you gotta do squats, but then you realize that the conditioning session that you did a couple days ago still has your legs feeling tired and heavy, and now your strength work's gonna suffer because of some condition that you did. Nothing is worse than that, and it's just counterproductive to all the goals that you probably have. So, in order to do something about that, what I thought I would provide is some programming where I give you five different 10 minute sessions that are more muscle specific. So today we're covering overhead press. That means you're gonna be doing a lot of overhead press movements or movements that will assist the overhead press or just using the same muscle groups that are involved in the overhead press, head press. That way it does not bleed over into any of your other strength work and mess anything else up. And like I just mentioned, these are short and intense. They're only gonna be about 10 minutes long. And if you guys have spent any time on a treadmill for 10 minutes, just listen to yourself breathe, there's gonna be nothing like that. It's gonna be manipulating time the entire session that you're doing it and it's just going to keep you on your toes and be more fun than a regular steady state cardio session i guess and as always guys i'm just trying to give you all the tools that you need because if you guys are following any of my free programs that i put out here online they always have three to five waves in them so i want you guys to have enough of these conditioning sessions to kind of plug in for that however if you want someone else to do it or you just want the convenience of me kind of setting it up because i've already made all the mistakes and know where to leave things out then you can contact me at Brian, again, I screwed it up again. Contact me at neverseat at gmail.com if you are interested in a personalized program. Personalized programs are absolutely what make these videos possible, so I really, really do appreciate all the support, guys. All right, so the very first exercise specific conditioning session for the overhead press, we're gonna start out with the simplest first. All you're gonna need for this is kind of a rack, like something like I have behind me where you have a pull-up bar, and you're also going to need a barbell set up with somewhere between 40 to 60% of your one rep maximum for the strict press. Now, as promised, each one of these is only gonna be 10 minutes, and all that you're gonna to try to do on this one is get as far as possible within that 10 minutes. What you're gonna do is set up a clock, and then you're gonna perform one pull-up. If you can't do a pull-up, just do an inverted row or some type of row. Immediately once that is done, you're gonna hustle over to the barbell where you're gonna perform one strict press. Once that strict press is done, you're gonna to drop to the floor and perform one burpee. Now, once that round is done, you're gonna take as much rest as you possibly need after one of each rep, and then you're gonna go two pull-ups or inverted bros if needed, followed by two strict presses. Again, we're talking light to moderate intensities on this. And then you're gonna drop and do two burpees. And then you're gonna do three reps, three reps, three reps, four reps, four reps, four reps. And you're gonna continue on going as far as you can in 10 minutes. Now, your score is going to be the number of completed rounds and it's going to start out very, very basic and simple until probably, I'd say around round seven. When you're doing seven of those strict presses, it's gonna start getting challenging because of the just overall compounded effect of all the other reps. And then you're gonna to need to start breaking up that overhead press however you need to, or the pull-ups however you need to, because just, just trust me, it accumulates very, very quickly. This is another one that seems so simple and so basic and easy until you actually try. You're gonna start out at a sprint, then come to a grinding halt. I hope all of you enjoy this one. All right, so the second exercise specific conditioning session for the overhead press, again, is gonna be 10 minutes long. Now, you're gonna break up that 10 minutes into even and odd minutes, or I guess odd and even makes more sense. So that just means that on your even minutes, you're gonna be doing one thing, and on your odd minutes, you're gonna be doing a different thing. When your timer kicks off and you are on minute one, which is 
an odd minute, I want you to break that minute up. The first 20 seconds of that minute, I want you to perform as many pull-ups or inverted rows if needed as possible. The second 20 seconds of that minute, I want you to do as many single arm dumbbell rows with your left side as you can, and then the third 20 seconds, I want you to do as many dumbbell rows with your right side. You'll be doing this exact thing every single odd minute. Now for your even minutes, you're gonna break up that 60 seconds the exact same way. The first 20 of which, I want you performing as many strict presses as you possibly can. Now, I know at the end of that 20 seconds, your strict press and your shoulders are probably gonna be giving out pretty well, so we'll just call in some recruits and we'll bring in the legs. So, for the second 20 seconds of this even minute, you'll be doing push presses. Now, once that is done, I know you're gonna need a little bit more help, so for the third 20 seconds of the even minutes, you'll be doing push jerks or split jerks or just pretty much getting that bar up there any way possible. And if you guys need any more help on any of those exercises I just mentioned, I do have tutorials on all of them as part of my overhead press playlist that I will be putting in the description box down below. All right, and exercise specific conditioning session number three is going to be another 10 minute one. This one, we're going at the top of every minute for 10 minutes. And all that means is that every single time that second hand comes back around to the 12, your set begins again. So if you get whatever you need to get done in that minute done very quickly, you get more rest. If you take your time and do it slowly, you get less rest. It is completely up to you. So all you're gonna do at the top of each one of those 10 minutes is either three pull-ups and three strict presses or three thrusters. Now here's where it gets harder. You can begin this session as light as needed. However, wherever you are set up, I want you to grab a bunch of change plates and bring them over to where you are and throw them on the ground because that remainder of the minute that you have to rest, you will also be spending trying to add as much weight as possible. So for every single round that you are able, you're gonna add some weight. So let's say you start out with 100 pounds and you are doing three pull-ups and three strict presses on minute number one. When minute number two rolls around, you better have slapped some fives on that because now you have three pull-ups and three strict presses at 110 pounds or 105 pounds. And then you have the remainder of a minute to make another choice about weight. Slap some more small plates on, when that time comes back around, you have three pull-ups and three more strict presses wherever you're at. Now, if you choose to do the thrusters, I would not recommend doing the pull-ups because it's just more overall body movement. However, if you are gonna choose to do the thrusters, remember that you are working your legs. Even if it is with very light weights, you still could be creating a little bit of a dent in your recovery if you do have squats coming up the next day or even two days after. So you wanna be very, very careful in your selection as far as that goes. Exercise specific conditioning session number four, uh, I would probably set up near a dumbbell rack. Now, again, this is gonna be for 10 minutes and you're just gonna try, very similar to the first challenge that we talked about, you're just gonna try to get as many of these completed rounds as possible in a 10 minute type of time frame. If you don't have 10 minutes, trust me, eight minutes will do. This one sucks. But all I'd like to see you do is go over to that dumbbell rack and grab a pair of dumbbells that you can confidently lateral raise about 10 reps in a strict-ish type of manner. All right, so that weight is probably going to be fairly light, and that is good because the first thing that you're going to do is raise those things above your head and complete 20 strict presses as perfectly as possible. Now on that 20 strict press, I want you to keep your arms up there because you're going to be completing a waiter's walk. Now if you don't know what a waiter's walk is, you guys have all seen a waiter carrying like a big tray on their hand like this, and every once in a while, a waiter will have to hold it very high above their head. That is all that you're doing, is the waiter's walk with the dumbbells very high above your head. So on your 20th press, I want you to stay locked out and walk those things 50 feet or 20 feet or whatever, 30 seconds, you're just taking a walk with those things and letting your arms fatigue. Once you get to the other side, you're going to complete 10 of those lateral raises. Now, remember, you should be able to do these pretty strict-ish. By the end of this, it is not gonna be strict at all. You're going to be swinging them around like a loser. But I digress. So once you are done, those 10 lateral raises, I want you to raise them back above your head into that waiter's walk position and carry them back to the dumbbell rack where you're going to question your life decisions. I would, at that point, get a quick sip of water and decide which dumbbells you're going to grab next. Maybe you'll be able to grab the same ones. Maybe you'll even be able to go heavier at first, uh, but eventually you will start to have to keep running down the rack and running down the rack and running down the rack as your arms fatigue because eventually you're gonna to get to the part where uh, they're so bad that you know you're not gonna be washing your hair in the shower. And exercise specific conditioning session number five, just like all the other videos, is going to be a body weight challenge. Now, uh, this actually is gonna end up being two because this is enough, but the body weight challenge is nothing more than find a door, find a wall, find some place that is sturdy, get yourself into a handstand position, very specifically not a headstand position, a handstand position at full lockout, 
and stay there. Now obviously you're gonna have to be very, very careful that as you fatigue, you don't just pile drive yourself into the ground and uh, not be able to walk anymore. But the challenge here is just simply to stay there for two minutes. Now I, I know in your head you're saying that that can't possibly be that tough. However, uh, my personal record, I think it, I don't think I broke two minutes yet. I think my best is like at 157 or 158 or something like that. We have uh, one very, very good athlete in our gym who is in the mid twos right now, but that is about as good as it gets. Now, of course, it's gonna be easier at lighter body weights, but then again, you probably don't have as strong as shoulders, so it all weighs out. Guys, if you can make it three, four, five minutes, knock yourselves out. I hope you guys can stay upside down until you get red faced and fall over asleep. However, for me and just about everyone else that I've ever met in my entire life, two minutes is a great barrier. If you can make it two minutes, you're absolutely doing something. Again, don't tent stake yourself into the ground. But like I mentioned, that's not really a workout, but what is a workout is the reverse Bring Sally Up. So on many of my videos, you guys have seen me talk about the Bring Sally Up challenge where you just pick virtually any exercise and you turn on Moby's Flower. If you don't know what song that is, just YouTube search it or go down the description box, I'll leave it down there as well. But trust me, you've heard it, and basically he says, bring Sally up, bring Sally down. And for something like a squat, every time that he says, bring Sally up, you stand up. Every time he says, bring Sally down, you go down. Now this is the hard part, because the bottom position, the bring Sally down, is where the chorus words come in. So you end up holding that bottom position for a length of time. So if you do something like push-ups and you're down on the bottom, it's harder. If you're doing a bench press, it's harder. However, when it comes to overhead press, as you guys just learned in that last workout about those really friendly waiter's walks, the up position of the overhead press is often very, very tough to hold. So what I recommend is that people reverse the Sally song. So if you're doing an overhead press, when it says bring Sally down, you're pressing up. When it says bring Sally up, you're holding down. What that will do essentially is when he says, bring Sally down, you're gonna press up and you're gonna hold it there for the remainder of the course and everything else, which is just basically doing a waiter's walk and it makes it so much more miserable. If you don't hate your life and you don't hate yourself, just do it the normal way. However, if you want a challenge, do that. I believe the song is right around three minutes long and it's something like 32 or 38 reps uh, during that entire time, but it's just more about holding the position and keeping the focus. It is extremely hard. Consider that your mindset challenge if you don't want to stand upside down for two minutes. All right guys, so there you go. There is part three of the exercise specific conditioning sessions where we talked about the overhead press. So now we've done the bench press in part one. We did squat part two, overhead press for part three, which means we have the deadlift for the final part. So looking really, really forward to that. I already actually wrote out the workouts. I just need to literally record the video and it will be done. I'm also this week really, really doing my best to try to train enough to get together a training video for literally since Christmas, I have not been able to train. Uh, I can get in and do like one thing before I get too sick and then I need to get back out. So uh, this week I'm really, really gonna try hard because I want to get you guys some of the training footage to just show you guys what's going on. Again, another health updates coming and another thing about some uh, movement prep, movement prep was the word that my brain would not figure out. So guys, hopefully I will catch up with you later in the week. This was a good week for me. I put out more than one video for the first time in 2020. So that was a positive thing. Hopefully I will catch up with you later in the week. Until I do, go out, do something amazing with your lives. Keep working hard, people. Be nice to each other. I'll see you then.